Hi everybody, my name is Olga and I run the Natural Sanity Mama YouTube channel. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm here to talk to you all about postpartum nutrition. I'm here to talk about the three keys to having a thriving postpartum using the power of real foods. Now, this is a really, really important topic. And the reason why, and I'm going to talk about this in point number, th number three a little bit more, is because when you look up postpartum foods or recipes online, you actually tend to get stuff that will actually throw your body into into stress even more, will throw your gut into stress even more because our gut is highly compromised postpartum. So what happens is that the stress and trauma of labor actually creates a situation in the body where it's like a fight or flight response, right? So in any trauma or stress situation in your life, Everybody knows by this point, you've probably heard of fight or flight where your system, all of your body and all of your body's energy when you are faced with a threat is it goes to your extremities like it goes to your legs, right? So you can run away from the thread threat. It starts to pump blood through your body. You your your resources are diverted elsewhere is basically what I'm trying to say. And your digestive system now has a lot less blood going to it, a lot less digest digestive enzymes, a lot less digestive juices. And so your digestive system is actually very sensitive to the foods that you're eating. So you have to be very, very diligent about what you are choosing to put in your system after you have a baby because the body actually um, re reacts when you go through labor the body actually takes that as a stress on the body and when your body's healing postpartum you are closing that wound where your placenta used to be and a lot of things are going on with your hormones right your prolactin hormone shoots up because you are now breastfeeding there's so many switches and changes in what your hormones are doing there's the resources are diverted in order to feed your baby. So it's this massive stress to the system. And this is whether or not you've had a highly peaceful, amazing, beautiful birth, no matter how amazing your birth was, trauma-free, emotional trauma-free birth, it's still going to register as a traumatic event to your body and that your resources of your body are going to be diverted else. That was weird okay so um so that's what we're going to be talking about okay so the three secrets to having a thriving postpartum and this is something that i have learned because i went through two postpartums one with my first child and one with my second um pregnancy which was a set of twins right so the second time around was an even bigger stress to my body because i was you know, growing and feeding two babies. And I had a postpartum hemorrhage shortly after birth. So despite that, I had a much more thriving, much more healed, much more um, energized postpartum because I had figured out, um, you know, the food, the food situation. Like I figured out exactly what, it, what I need to eat by doing research and taking some incredible courses. I have uh, learned what it is that my body truly needs to sustain itself and be extremely nourished so that I could take care of my kids and not be drained myself. Now, when I decide whether or not to have a cup of coffee, it's I never have a cup of coffee because I need it to survive. Rarely I will. And that's because I have a really crappy night's sleep, right? Because we, when our kids are still toddlers, my, my youngest are too, right? So their sleep is not always awesome. And sometimes they are sick. So I am up with them at night. So at that point, you know, I might struggle during the day. So that's really important. Sleep is really important. But if you're someone that's actually getting quite a bit of sleep on a daily basis, like seven plus hours, um, of course, everyone's different. Some people really cannot function if, the, if they don't get their eight hours of sleep. But for the most part, if you're getting seven, eight hours of sleep and you're still feeling really lethargic throughout the entire day and you find it very hard to get through the day without having two, three, four cups of coffee, 
that's not normal. So it might be common and your other mom friends might, you know, be like, oh, I can relate. Yeah, like that's me, you know, that I'm also struggling. Just because it's common, it doesn't make it physiologically normal. You can feel better. So I'm there's no judgment, there's no shame around feeling like crap. I'm just saying that if you are getting the sleep and you still feel like crap, you can. There there is something you can do to feel better. And when it comes to nutrition, there's very specific things you need to remember. Okay, so key number one, right? I'm talking about the three keys today that are required for a thriving postpartum with the use of real foods. So key number one is make sure that when you are looking for postpartum recipes, you are not using Google, okay? This is very important because, like I said in the beginning, if you go to Pinterest or you go to Google, the situation is changing a little bit. So some of my favorite postpartum teachers are getting their information across. So you'll see some of their recipes for like broths, like healing bone broths and things like that on there and soups and things like that. Um, They're slowly appearing on Pinterest and those sites. But you're going to see a lot of things like salads, smoothies, you know, charcuterie boards, um, you know, here, you know, crackers and cheese and snacks like that for postpartum kind of foods and snack foods that you can use, you know, while breastfeeding. All of those that I just mentioned are going to throw your body into more stress. Your gut is going to be more stressed it's not going to help you heal. Okay. So first and foremost, use books like, um, I believe it's called 40. Oh, it's one of my favorite books. I should have brought it here, but it's called 40, the first 40 days, I believe. Sorry that I'm doing this on the fly, but such is life. Um, yeah. So this book, yeah. So it's called the first 40 days, the essential art of nourishing a new mother. So that's a great book to go for recipes. It's got a lot of cultural, um, you know, Eastern recipes. So from Asian cultures and, you know, so Indian, um, and I believe it's mostly Indian and Chinese based foods. So if that's something that you have a hard time with, you might want to go for something else. Um, I love Lily Nichols stuff. She's really a guru in the postpartum and the, the, the pregnancy and the postpartum space when it comes to real food nutrition, um, according to new research, according to the most current research that doctors won't tell you. And, um, and Miranda Bauer. So they're kind of my gurus that I've followed when it comes to, I don't actually like the term guru, but they are the people that I trust the most because they are women. They have gone through this themselves. They've done thousands and thousands of hours of research to make sure that they are bringing across the best information for women to heal postpartum. And they've worked with thousands of clients who they have helped heal and they know exactly what works because they've literally helped women with, you know, bipolar, postpartum bipolar disorder, um, autoimmune diseases, they have helped women heal through so much. So I want you to really focus on those three resources or, um, or similar. So like really um, tradition and culture based research included in where they're getting these recipes from. So don't use Google as the be all end all. Number two, I want you to really focus on warm foods so cooked warm foods with healthy fats fats are so important postpartum okay and they're going to help you actually eliminate better they're going to help you know oil like keep everything going like oil your system out (laughs) in a way hot fats are really really essential so don't do any low fat stuff trying you know be it, the fat thing is over. So the, the low fat trends was actually very harmful. And what happened was people were, they got onto the low fat bandwagon. There a lot of products came out that were low fat. Meanwhile, they were loaded with sugar and things that were awful for you and actually made you gain weight. And so high fat foods will not make you keep on the baby weight, help you, you know, um, they won't make you keep 
unnecessary baby weight on. So don't think that that's a thing. Um, it's more sugar that does that and carbohydrates that are empty uh, that will not allow you to, to lose that weight as quickly and as naturally. So for me, it's not about quickness. It took me over two years to, I'm not even back really to my pre-baby weight, but I'm at a very healthy and happy weight. Um, and so the weight thing is really um, tricky for a lot of people. They get caught up and feel like they have to lose that weight fast. And for me, I say, don't worry about losing weight fast. If you follow a nutrient dense um, protocol, postpartum, then using the recipes from those women or from the workshop that I am leading at the end of this week, you are going to, it's going to really help you feel good, feel strong, feel ecstatic. You're going to be able to move your body more, which means that you can exercise a little in little bits at a time, you know, because if you have no energy because you're eating crappy food, you're not even going to want to exercise ever. You're not going to even want to get up off the bed. Um, and so that's really important. So, so yes, warm, fat, nutrient dense, real foods, meaning really, really try to stay away from processed junk food. Now, things like gluten-free crackers and tortillas, you know, sometimes you'll use that, but I really encourage you as much as possible to make homemade meals. And that leads me to my third point cooking stuff from scratch when you're postpartum, especially if your partner is not going to do that for you or the people that are supporting you and living with you, you want to plan that in advance. So the third point is really plan it in advance. You're not going to regret it. And that might mean that you have to get a freezer, like a deep freezer to store all of the stuff that you're prepping for yourself because it may not fit in your regular fridge. It probably won't, right? Um, some people like to keep stuff in jars and then they'll take the jar out, sorry, freeze stuff in jars, like big jars, and they'll take it out um, the day before they want to eat it. Um, you know, that for me is very challenging because because I never remember. Like I usually like defrost stuff from frozen. I throw it in a pot and it's not ideal, but I often don't remember to take it out the night before. Um, so you can use, use t- other Tupperwares glass Tupperwares um, or plastic Tupperwares. Um, Yeah, so I definitely recommend you prep in advance. So what I did was I, you know, you can make big batches in an Instapot or a crock pot. You can make huge batches of food and you can pack Tupperwares. You can get one-time use Tupperwares or whatever, or the ones you have and just pack them full of these highly nutritious, highly digestible, easy to pro- for your body to process foods, right? So you you fill Tupperwares full of these soups and, you know, even porridges, um, you know, stews, and you freeze them in portions so that you have your whole postpartum nutrition taken care of, right? Because during, when you're, when you're in the, in the midst of your postpartum havoc, uh, you try to breastfeed, you know, and Um, trying to survive, just trying to get enough hours of sleep, you're obviously not going to be like whipping up an incredible meal for yourself. Um, Your partner might. So if you have a partner that will cook for you and you can tell him exactly what it is you want him to make, I definitely recommend prepping the recipes in advance. So actually giving um, the people that are taking care of you a list, if you have those people, um, a list of things that they could make for you, a very specific list based on the resources that I recommended for you, right? Um, so that's very important. You want to prep in advance. A lot of women, um, they actually, you know, they get meal trains or people, um, say that they're going to help them. So they have a plan, right? So people are like, okay, I'm going to bring you food on Thursdays and Susie's going to bring you food on Tuesdays. And, um, Stacy's going to bring you lunch on Mondays and they have this plan, Um, but something can happen with that plan and people can not show up for you and you could have a massive disaster where now you have no postpartum plan, you don't have these foods prepared, and then you're back to eating the crackers and cheese, um, and hummus. And that's pretty much what you're surviving on, which is not actually going to set your, you up for success in terms of feeling 
good and feeling complete and recovering quickly, especially in those first 40 days postpartum, right? The first six weeks um, is a major healing period. I also want to say that if you're someone that has, you know, uh, one, two, three-year-olds, if you've had little ones in the last six years and you're still feeling like what I've described, like you're not in the early postpartum, this is the thing. When I say the word postpartum, most people believe that that has to do with the first 40 days postpartum. (sighs) However, many of us, because we are not actually taught and educated around postpartum foods and what exactly um, are the best foods for us to nourish our gut so that we can feel optimal again, our our postpartum healing is actually not complete. And so we walk around depleted, exhausted for years. For years and years and years, sometimes these things develop into more serious conditions. And we're still just walking around getting, you know, maybe we maybe we're taking a prescription med here and there, like maybe we're trying to manage some side of one of our symptoms, but we're not actually dealing with the root cause of the issue, which is your your gut is is has not healed. You've thrown stuff at your gut when it, it was at its most stressed, and now it's like failing you. And so that's what we want to talk about, right? So here I'm going to now talk about my workshop that is coming up at the end of this week. So on Saturday, yeah, Saturday, the 29th of October, I'm hosting a live workshop at, I believe it's one o'clock Eastern time. Make sure, yeah, at 12 o'clock Eastern time, it's called Fuel Your Goddess Gut. It is on Eventbrite. I will post the link below. I would highly encourage you to sign up if you are in the first several years after having your babies and you feel really lethargic, you have had major extreme hair loss and brittle hair that hasn't actually come back the way that you, that you're like, okay, where'd my hair go? Like, I swear I had more, more than this, right? That's actually your body's way of signaling that something like there's an underlying deeper issue. Hair loss to a certain extent, super normal postpartum. However, if it doesn't come back, or it's like very extreme and you still have very thin hair, that is your body screaming out for help basically. Um, And there's things you could do to repair that. So in this workshop, it's all about the five keys to replenish and fuel your gut postpartum in in the years after having babies, right? So I'm gonna talk about in a very simple, simple, simple way, I'm gonna tell you what to eat, what to avoid and what to um what principles are really important and that includes i'm going to include five recipes because i feel like the reason why i'm including five is that you don't need you don't need a lot of recipes you need the tools and you need a handful of recipes because if i give you too many you're going to end up not just it's information over overload, right? If I give you five recipes and you make those five and you pack your freezer full up to go ready meals, that's a lot more useful to you than giving you a giant book of a hundred recipes where you have to pick and choose and you don't know which one to choose. And then you end up not doing it because you're overwhelmed, right? So, um, yes, exactly. So I'm going to tell you what to eat, what not to eat in for the healing time, right? So don't, this is not a restrictive diet. This is a very nourishing way to eat so that you can replenish what's missing in your body, the essential nutrients that are um, depleted, likely. You likely haven't gotten enough of certain foods, certain vitamins, minerals. Um, And so this is a very food-based way to eat that doesn't involve too many supplements or any at all. Um, And it will honestly just help you feel great again. I still had anxiety up to a year and a half postpartum. So that was one symptom that I was still kind of battling. And although I have these plant-based ways of helping myself and I, you know, I have tinctures and I have adaptogenic herbs that I, uh, herbs and, and, you know, psilocybin, not, why am I saying psilocybin? Um, <laughs> psilocybin is mushrooms, right? Yeah, I think I said that right. Fungi. No, I meant to say, I meant to say fungi, not specifically psilocybin. Um, fungi. 
you know, these adaptogenic things I was using to help manage my stress and my anxiety postpartum, um, my healing was clearly not, not complete, my nutritional healing. And so especially, so I recommend this workshop to you, to everyone, but especially if you are, have been vegetarian for many years, or you just recently stopped being vegetarian or vegan. So this is something that I, this is something that I battled myself is the idea of using animal foods in my life again, after I hadn't for years and years and years over a decade. Um, and I actually found that at the end of the day, having these amazing bone broth stews with, you know, really dense, um, you know, animal foods and fats is what actually helped complete my healing. What made my anxiety go away? What got me in control of, yeah, of my stress, honestly, like because of the gut brain connection, whatever's going on in our guts has a direct impact on what's going on up here, right? with our neurons. And so I really, really highly suggest that you come to the workshop. It's very affordable. It's like $67 or something like that. Um, and yeah, you're, you're really going to get a full plan of what to eat in very simple terms. So it's not confusing, not overly scientific, just really manageable, simple tips, um, and recipes. So yes, um, that's all for now. I hope you enjoyed this talk. I really, really encourage you to take your postpartum healing seriously because it's going to rub off on your entire family because when mom's not feeling great, everybody knows, right? And it, that's going to throw a certain frequency in the field of everyone that you're around, your kids, your spouse, whoever you're around is going to be affected if you have high anxiety, if you have, you know, PPD and all that stuff. And not to mention, you want to feel good, right? So there's no, there's no shame. There is no guilt about this, right? Because I didn't know how to properly eat postpartum either. And I didn't know how to complete my postpartum healing journey either until I, you know, learned from these incredibly qualified um, and amazing and intelligent women who t basically taught me how, right? And so I want to spread this knowledge to as many women that will listen because I want everybody to live their life from a place of, from a healed place, from feeling strong, feeling good. You know, it's not going to fix everything in our life. It's not going to make motherhood easy all of a sudden, but it's definitely going to give you the upper hand. Hand. It's going to give you the strength to move forward in the most challenging times, which is those like, you know, when our kids are so, so little, they're one, two, three, four, five years old, like some of the hardest times for moms, right? So I want you to feel whole, complete. I want you to feel strong during this time. And one of the easiest ways, honestly, it is easy, is through nourishment, true, deep, real food nourishment. Okay. So if you want to join me this weekend, um, go ahead and click the link below and register. It's an Eventbrite event. So really, really easy to sign up. Um, and I will see you there. Comment below if you have any questions.